Recording has begun. Order, please. Uh, do I have an approval for the minutes of the October 27th meeting? Everybody have an opportunity. Your microphone on. Everyone have an opportunity to look at the minutes. Okay. Patty, you want a second? Second? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? There you go. Okay. We had a very successful fall, I think, at the station. We had, I don't know, the trick or treat day. I think we had at least 200, at least 200 kids, parents coming through. And then the, um, Businessman in La Plata had asked us about having Santa Claus there for um, the small shop day in La Plata, and Santa was there. That, again, was very, very successful. Uh, parents really watched out for their children. Um, we had absolutely no issues going on there. Then we had a homeschool group there. Uh, we could go Thursday. Delightful. Again, the parents were there, watched over their children, and all went well. And uh, one of the ladies there wrote a little article about the experience of coming to the museum and sent pictures. So I forwarded those on to Michelle Miner for um, hopefully she'll get something in our town news and notes. Okay, matters to review. Review the caboose audio system. Is somebody coming in? Hi, how are you? No. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. here he is. Here he is. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, it looks like he's got a goodie for us. Caboose. Caboose. Oh, doesn't that look nice? Oh, look at that, y'all. Isn't that nice? Oh, here we go. Okay. Very impressive. Thank you. It's a train station museum caboose exhibit. <laughs> that is real nice, Rich. Thank you. Do we still have? Thanks, sir. Oh, thank you. Of those books. Do we still have some? Or? No, Stuart, we should, excuse me, just saying. Was looking for them? We were, we were just upstairs. So we need to order, um, get there, some more. There is a, a small number of them up there. I don't know how many are up here, though. Okay, but there's no more at the train station. Didn't we have a whole box from? No, we've used them all. Yeah. Okay. So I can get in touch with uh, Wermuth's daughter and see if they have some more for sale. Okay. We um set, do we set a price for this or I'll have to go back and look and I have some receipts in here that probably will tell me what we paid. I thought we paid more for them than we should have, but no. Are you sure that uh, Caroline doesn't have? She said that she had a box of them back when we were looking for them. That she had a box of them at Martin's. But would she sell them? I mean, she's going to sell them to us more than at a higher cost than what we would pay for Wearmuth's family. No, no, no. Yeah, but she got them from. What yeah, the I, I, I had. At the same time that we got ours, I guess. Yeah, I have. I have Anne's phone number and I can get in touch with her and get more books. I'll go back and look at what we previously purchased. That okay. box that you saw this morning is full. Oh, it is full. Okay. Yeah. I, th I thought there were just a few in there, but. It's um, I was just wondering because it, it, when people ask about it and they want to know what, how much to buy them for, I don't know what to say. I usually just say if you just give us a donation to the museum and most of the time they give more than 10 bucks. So it's worth giving them a book for that. But uh, I don't know what else to do in that situation. I, we try. I, I can try and research for them to people, but if they ask for them, like. Or, bullying, mm -hmm. yeah. or somebody that came in there that, you know, I mean, 
I will say, please just take one, but I'm not giving them to every kid that comes in. Oh, no, 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 we're not doing that either. So are you saying there is a box with these books in it? So we do not need to purchase any at well, this time. Well, it's a case, and I don't know how long that'll last you. Um, and I don't know where others might be or how much it would cost to reprint them. Okay, they don't need to be reprinted. reprinted. Um, Mr. Wareman's daughter, Anne, has the boxes in her home, and that's where we purchased our box from. So if you're saying we still have them, are they at the museum? Three or four. Not very many. Well, where's the box you're referring to? Upstairs in the records room. Okay, so that box can be taken to the museum, and we won't have we to purchase any. Uh, we don't. I mean, how many we go through a season? Maybe a dozen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Well, that's great. So if, if the ones that are here can be taken to the museum, that would be wonderful. Good. Yeah. Thank a little you. off the subject. Do you have a book now? No, not yet. Tony and I are still working on it. Oh, book. I can. Somewhere I saw something about it. Yeah, we're, we're going to discuss it. Yeah. Oh, OK. I'm sorry. Both OK. <laughs> OK. Um, First item, review of the Caboose audio system. The system number one repeats itself twice. I think we know that. Yeah. The exterior button that you press on the Caboose is not working. I heard that. So I, I think we need to call the electrician back. So do you know who the electrician is? It was the one that I can, I, I can find out <laughs> because I was in communication with him when he came okay. in and did the work and all that stuff. And okay. he still has some of the parts from that I need to get back. Okay, so, so will you... And there, and we can add to it the uh, light that uh, shines over the upper seats doesn't work, doesn't come on either. Okay, so will you mm -hmm. review that with him and um, follow up on getting yes. everything done before we open up in the springtime? Thank you. Yep. The other day when the children were there, um, they, they listened for a while, but then they got a little restless. But uh, of course, they wanted to climb. They wanted to climb up into yeah. the cupola. <laughs> they wanted to the bathroom. They, they want action. <laughs> yeah, they it, but they were great. Do you think it would hold their attention longer if we put the mayor's comments after the other part instead of in front? And almost anything that goes more than 30 seconds, <laughs> that's going to lose their attention, I think. But <laughs> might have to break it up into different stations and just have... Well, the fact that we're trying to appeal to both adults and children, mm -hmm. I say leave it the way it is. Some are going to sit and listen, some are not, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I... I'm happy to not have to train them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Rich. That is. I haven't heard that. that, so I have. Oh, that looks good. Let's see. Update of items for the caboose. I've talked with um, Shannon. Nothing's been happening there as far as getting the lettering on the caboose or um, any of the items for the interior of the caboose. She was going to get back in touch with Chris Wagman. I thought Kelly might be here today and give us an update, but I guess she's not. So. I don't know. Well, we do. We do have the good news is finally, thanks to Craig, we have the mannequin and we have the suit on the mannequin. I think we sent out mm -hmm. a picture of that and that's now in the caboose. So then this will be added to it. This exhibit will be added to that. And um, then the only thing we need after that is the original letter uh, from the um, Indian head and have it framed so i am still working on trying to restore the lettering enough to be able to read it mm -hmm. <laughs> but i do have the original and i'm still working on it it's about two-thirds done okay so you want it framed and then we will have it framed and i have debbie's number over in she's living over in virginia now debbie uh, from bernie's yeah right. um i think if it's something if it's something this I don't think we ought to just stick it in a frame. Let's just let's get that. Yeah, frame. yeah. I think it's gonna be properly framed. It's just uh we, what we wanted to do, I think, was we have that uh photograph that was taken of the caboose while it was still on the siding before it left Indian Head that I I guess um yeah. art 
took that picture and it was badly faded. It was degrading really badly. So I took that and took it home and, and did a lot of restoration work on it on the computer. I've got it, I think, about as good as I can get it, which isn't saying a lot, but it's we were going to print that with uh, a restored version of the memo uh, from the Indian head underneath of it. And so I've got the first half of it done. I got the photograph done and most of the Sorry, memo sir. done. And I guess I can get that to them digitally and they can just print it. Yeah, Debbie's doing the work for me. The, yes. the boards for the library. She's, she's at the house last week. So, okay. Yeah. She did that. She did that big map that we had, yeah. the, the railroad map that we had. Oh, sure. Yeah, she did that. I um, she came over and oh, good. did that. So I have, a, I have a number too. I, okay. I have a number. I can give that to your arms. And we also need some kind of little small statement, little plaque, kind of like you did with the um, uh, medicine bottles, saying that the uniform that is there was worn by I guess by the can conductor. Can you fill in the rest of that? I, oh, I'm not sure I can, but I can I can wing it. <laughs> One well, by the conductor who drove it, who carried the caboose down from Indian Head, and that's all I know about it. Yeah. Well, we just need something that says you know this was that that uniform was part of the Indian land trip Head. of that caboose. Yes. Yes. So we've got to get that verbiage. The interesting yeah. thing about that is when, um, and special thanks to uh, Janice Sagers with the Port Tobacco Players for helping to facilitate all of that. When we went to put it on the mannequin, we realized it had been stored inside out. And it was in magnificent shape. So those patches that we didn't think were there are there. Oh, wow. I did know that I, I looked at it when I was in there because I had to take that, that train display down. And uh, I looked at it and went, wow, that looks really sharp. They did a good job on that. That's one hand. To look at it the right way, it looks a lot better, doesn't it? <laughs> well, did you have pants for that too? I thought you uh, well, I had gotten pants. A, a friend gave me pants of her husband's when he went to Charlotte Hall Military Academy, and also another pair that were navy. But uh, they that was when we were talking about a full mannequin, okay. And since we didn't do the full mannequin, I just left the other ones hanging in one of the closets there, oh, okay. And that would have been hard unless he was 15 when he was at Charlotte Hall. This was a very small. <laughs> All right, we reviewed the fall events that I say went 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 well. Okay, um, Stuart and Tony, did you all want to talk about the book that you're writing or has been written, or do you all have anything to say about it? I've got some stuff. Yeah, you know, if you want to talk about that first, you want to talk. Um, just to say that we are working on the book. We're still, it's still an ongoing process. Um, I guess you know that originally when I did the Tornado exhibit for the museum, I had gotten so much information to get and I went ahead and wrote a book on it. And then Tony came in and mentioned that he was writing a book on it and we started talking and I realized that his approach was more expansive than my approach and he hadn't done the part I had done and he and he had done the part I hadn't done and it seemed like it made sense to kind of stick them together. So we're working on it together now and our tentative release date was going to be in 2026 when we have the 100th anniversary of the tornado and we're working on a number of publicity outreaches to uh, to oh, get people to give us their stories. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get some uh, I got, I got some publicity out. Our <laughs> Radio, uh, you may have seen pictures in the county papers right. uh, and so forth, where we're asking people to provide any information they can, any stories they have. Uh, we want to get um, the photographs of the children that were killed, but actually we're trying to get photographs of as many of the kids that were there at the time as we can. And we're doing little uh, summaries of their lives uh, and cut short by the tornado, obviously. Um, and we're also making an effort to try to identify as many of the children in the classroom photos as we can. So we've made a lot of progress, but there's a lot of gaps remaining. And so Tony's got more outreach efforts in, in mind. And uh, in, in October, you still out with the Charles County Historical Society? Yes. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm a member of the society, and I recommended uh, Stuart to talk <clears throat> at their uh, October dinner. Talk, same thing, you know, talk about the outreach, what we've done, and mm -hmm. the help we need, and all that. And also the two African Americans were trying very hard to, to uh, get information about them and their lives. And well, both of them are, are buried in unmarked graves. We're trying to rectify that, but it's it's a challenge. But yeah, we're trying to find out as much information as we can about the 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 least covered people from the original event. You know, there, there were a lot of people involved. There were sixty children, maybe sixty one. We're not even sure about that yet, but I think it's sixty. <laughs> And um, of course, the two adults that were killed, uh, and we don't have really clear information of probably maybe a third of them, I think. But we have found, we've made a lot of progress. We have found amazing photos. We have found a lot of material that had been skipped over before. Tony had a, a good session with somebody at the Library of Congress, and between him being able to ask for the, photos or for the newspapers and me finding these obscure newspapers nobody knew were out there, <laughs> uh, we were able to come up with some really interesting material. So I think it's going to be a pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. even the uh, like Marty Martin, he's amazed by the pictures we've come up with. I didn't know we found a picture of uh, the, uh, the girl there that was in the hospital. She said, Ethel, yeah. Ethel. He said, I didn't realize she was in the hospital until he showed me the picture. And then, of course, the picture of them carrying the casket of uh, uh, James La Vega, which was very, very hard to show him, but uh, it's uh, yeah. I think a lot of people are going to be amazed by the the pictures, and we've just begun, hopefully, uh, to un unravel the pictures. So I think it's going to be a real. I, w I wish we had a location where we could do a really major um, display or whatever for, regarding that tornado. Because at the time, won't it be the 25th anniversary? It would be 2026. The, It'll be the 100th anniversary. 100th. I mean, of the, of the other. Oh, that was last year. Two. 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 So 26 would make it 24 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're almost at the 25th anniversary. You know, if you do it over a period of a year, you'd be at the 25th anniversary of the 02 and the 100th anniversary of the um yeah. of 26 as they say we only have one every 75 years <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have a, a La Plata's tradition of tornadoes <laughs> hey we're doing what we're, we're, we're doing for a tornado although that's not wish that well, we had yeah. talked about when we were trying to figure out a way to save the two houses on washington avenue which it turns out we only need to save one now um that we could have used one of those structures for an exhibit um, and the only other place that comes to mind outside of in, here at the town hall would be maybe at the firehouse, if that um, what had once been the rescue squad portion of it could be cleared and made serviceable by 19. How about the feed store that you mentioned that supposedly open? Well, who owns that? Um, I, I do know who owns it. Betty, at Betty's Beauty Shop. It's her son-in-law that owns it, which I have his phone number. But there's no a restroom in there. There's no handicap. There's no heat. Entrance. There's no oh. heat. <laughs> 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 they had they had a they had a space heater in that office, but the back, the warehouse part, mm -hmm. there's nothing. There's no heat in it. The uh, outdoor exhibit be workable that we could put institute into the garden that was built for the purpose of the summit on the purpose. Jar garden. Mm -hmm. Would be interesting. You know, it's by the building there. We could put stuff on the walls. And... The building is going to be painted. That's. Yeah, I've never thought about it. And it has to be done. Weatherproofing the exhibits. Before. Right. But you'd, have to, you'd have to hang pictures and take steps off. I mean, it has to be. I think, we, I think the money has to be used. Interesting okay. idea, though. But you, can, you can get stuff printed on outdoor. But that's a, let's have this plant printed on plastic, for example. Mm -hmm. You can make mm -hmm. outdoor type. Things if you want to. Well, that's an idea. I like that idea. Yeah, it is, it is a good idea. Pretty cool idea. Too. Yeah, right. Yeah, the, isn't there the, the one of the one of the benches is right there, and, and they have the wall there. That'd be you know where they dedicates to thirteen children. That would be appropriate to have something on that wall. Well, there is a. She has a she has a mural. Thing, yeah. Like a flower thing. 
on that side. Oh, is that, yeah. 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 Gonna happen. that was just projected there. I don't know that that's reality. Yeah, there is a yeah. plan in the works. There was at least at the last meeting for a, a large mural to be painted on the back of the oh. station. So if we do the exhibit, it would it would either interfere with or have to be separated from yeah. that. So yeah. that we don't. Or you, you have that area where the uh, oil tank is, and we have a um, fencing mm. around that. Um, I believe it's it, the yeah. You have it later on. Your it could be. Um, uh, I could do a walking exhibit through the town too, uh, but that wouldn't for the twenty six tornado. That wouldn't make much sense because it think, really didn't hit the town. I would think you need more than an outside exhibit for the for the tornado. If you're gonna if you're gonna do it, do it. Well, it depends on if we're doing both tornadoes or just one tornado. Oh. Are I, we doing, I, I, we're going to try to do something. A very elaborate exhibit in mind that we could do for the 26 tornado if we had a lot of resources <laughs> and the interest in it and a location for it. I could. Well, what I can update you on the houses on Washington Avenue, which isn't much, but it appears that the Hotchkiss house will be, which is 106 will be demolished for the road to go through. It was stated at a meeting here at the Design Review Board by the gentleman who is head of Capital Services. I believe his name is Mr. Stevens. That sounds familiar. Uh, that the White House didn't have to be taken down, which would have been 208 Washington Avenue. Now, whether the county chooses to take it down or the county's going to use it themselves or something, who knows? The way he put it was in a very diplomatic, political, politically correct way. There is no plan at this time to demolish that house in building the library. He didn't commit to anything. Right. Well, right. could we approach them about using that house if they don't have plans for it to convert it into a historic center for the town or the county and make it an extension of I mean, we well, could probably get the historic society solved. What I understand, our hands are tied, and the Charles County Historic Preservation Commission, their hands are also tied. I mean, we've been basically told, you know, that there's well, nothing that could be done, and they've been told to stand back. So, who the person is to go and approach the county administrator on something like that, I have no idea. Or do we just wait? Evidently, the construction's going to start in March, possibly. So I guess we'll look and see whether we go up Washington Avenue and there's one house or two. If there's still one there, maybe at that point. I mean, the town owns the house, but it's leased to the county. So who makes the decisions? I have no idea. Well, what I stated was on the presumption that the house stays and that they leave it intact. And if they don't have any plans for it, and that would be an, would be an ideal location to um, do an exhibit for both tornadoes. And we're pretty sure that the, at least, I think Kelly and Shannon are pretty sure that there are grants out there mm -hmm. for this museum. And I mean, she was, they're talking, the train, they, they got a, Big grant, didn't they? For that, this is this is something to do with the COVID. COVID, right? that was COVID money that they got yeah. for the painting, for the painting and all of that. And then they got another grant for the Main Street thing or something to do there. So there are grants out there that the town can ask for to redo this house if we, this if we, okay. figure out who. If we, get the opportunity, who, if we get the opportunity, guys. If we get the opportunity. Yeah. I mean, they don't. Now, we had a grant, if you all remember, for the um, train station museum from the Southern Maryland Heritage Grant. And that was just a small grant because that's all we applied for. But, I mean, they give grants as big as $50,000. Mm. And, you know, if, if we knew this could happen, we could apply for the grant. But, there's, you know, until we had something established, you know. Well, this one, what they're, I don't know, Craig knows. What, what, what they are, what they are, it was like $350,000 that I saw. The Main Street um, advancement um, and, and the painting, not, not including mural, the mural is still your decision. Um, but as far as the painting of the firehouse, um, it was actually $75,000 put 
to the firehouse. Painting is just a portion of that. You can still do other things with what remains. Um, but that is part of the American Rescue Plan Act. Mm -hmm. um, every municipality and county in the United States received, based on their annual budget, that amount. And a lot of towns, um, I was just at a clerk's convention last week, we talked about it a great deal, um, are using that to bolster up infrastructure, um, repair all sorts of things that they normally wouldn't have been able to deal with in their budgets. Um, the town of La Plata has broken that out. I can get you a copy of the breakout of the ARPA funds. Um, but it's available online. You can find it. Um, but uh, so 75,000 of that was set aside, earmarked, I think it's 75,000. I better yeah, double check that. Yeah. Specifically for the firehouse and the museum. Do we have any kind of plans on how that's going to be broken down other than just the mural? I mean, for the interior I mean, the mural, that needs to be done. That's under a different plan. The okay. painting of the firehouse, the, the current color mode, the black and white. Is is yet yeah, we're there. <laughs> so the seventy five thousand, in other words, seventy five thousand is available in its entirety for the purpose of taking care of that that building. Yes, and what okay. you've you've asked uh, Public Works to do uh, is paint it, and you've agreed on the color scheme. Um, everything else after well, that, the mural yeah. comes from a different budget, yeah. comes from a different grant. And that was just a possibility. Yeah. that came out of the uh, Plato Garden Club. But I don't know that that's going to happen. I don't know that it needs to happen. You know, they fluctuate quite a bit. And that is entirely up to you. Yeah. Yeah, I think we left it the last time with asking if the firemen had any objections to putting a mural on it. Um, well, as of June of well, next year, it won't be the firemen's anymore. So Not thinking. I'm thinking of in terms of the so historic then, quality yeah. of building. And just, oh, I agree. We don't want. I think to. we should. I'm, I'm talking out of. I think it's important that you keep the fire department involved in that building because, well, Seagrave for starters. Yes. But as far as ownership is concerned, um, the town. What was it, 20 years ago? Offered to buy it for this amount, and they said we'd like you to pay us over the next 20 years. And well, that comes up June of this year. But I, yeah, I think they'll still be involved because they still have a fire engine in there. Um, and as far as the clutter that's in the rescue squad, they assured me six months ago that they would get that out yeah. of there. So I just need to poke them again. Wow. Is that the town street? Is Firehouse Alley a town street? <laughs> Firehouse Alley, I believe, um, is actually owned by three businesses that are in that area. Um, we did get a for the street painting project That's we right. could get away from was thinking with the street because those three businesses are parking back there all the time because i just i don't think it's those day. businesses though um, <laughs> i don't think it's those businesses though it, it goes back van mitchell's one of them that's how far back it goes mm -hmm. um so it's oh, wait a minute who is van mitchell van mitchell? he doesn't have any property that butts up to the firehouse street well, well the old auto. Mitchell's. Oh, no, that's, but that's Jake. I mean, Jake, Jake still owns that building. Oh, Jake Mitchell. Yeah. Jake Mitchell, that's who it is. Well, I, that's just whose name is on it, not Mitchell. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, Mitchell, going so through. Was Mitchell Rose. Right. Was Mitchell Rose. Right. And that, my thing was when they put that, whatever it is, antique store on the corner there, why on earth didn't they paint that whole building there? Mm -hmm. You know, because I know Jake Mitchell still owns it, and Kelly told me, Kelly told me that you go into Jake Mitchell's, it's still, he's still got everything. Oh, yeah, it's straight that out of 1930. There. Yeah, well, everything is still in there. It should be a museum by itself. <laughs> it was a, yeah. I remember there was a place in Solomon's, uh, there was a general store in Solomon's Island that was converted into a real estate office at one point, but the general store was purchased with all of its old items still intact and they left it that way. So you go in there and you walk into a general store from like 1929 or something. It was it was really amazing. Like walking into the plate of mail. <laughs> kind of, but, but I mean, I don't know, they'll turn the whole town into a museum by the time I'm done with it. That's an opportunity there. You have established that, I mean, I'm sure that you have, that, um, you know, that they, they're a go for the street painting and everything. I, mean, I believe so. That's uh, another, another department. Um, that's coming out of 
another another grant from someplace plan. else. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But um, and this this American Rescue Plan has to be spent by a certain amount of time. Yes. Right? Yeah. And actually, um, the government's looking at it, going, "Ooh, we might have overdone that," mm -hmm. and they're starting to put more restrictions on it. But that's another reason to okay. spend it quickly. Mm -hmm. I know. So yeah. definitely be thinking about what else you might want to do with the firehouse because you have funds available to do more with the firehouse. I know the floor would needed some work on it, and there was talk about the difficulty in having the public access the second floor because the stairwell was too narrow and there was no <laughs> ramp and there's no elevator. Uh, so if we did make a museum, it would all have to be located on the first floor. Or you could use the money to make it ADA compliant. Yeah. Which would be the, pretty extensive. The, um, well, I, I don't know how much money we got. <laughs> <laughs> now, the rescue squad side of it, that was an atom. Yeah. So you can see where the windows were yeah. for the original building. It'd be very easy to knock that out and open that whole thing up and have one side as a museum and keep the sea grave in there, I guess. I don't know. Or maybe move the sea grave to the other side and have this side a museum and the reason i'm saying that is access into the building it's possible you could put the sea grave at the other door and you know then you've got the sea grave here of course that might be in the way of the steps you've got you've got options to explore but i think just personally the sea grave is a centerpiece of any museum uh, absolutely yeah that's the reason to go but you know you might the building has that wall there you might Take out that wall and have a glass enclosure where they couldn't go in and touch the sea grave, but they can go in and see the sea. They can see the sea grave from this side without actually going in and putting their hands on it. Blah 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 blah. blah. Well, the rescue squad side has brand new, brand new garage doors on it, but the sea grave side has rotting. I mean, they're going to have to when they paint, they're going to have to put what it. I mean, I'm sure that's all included in in the plans for painting as i understand it is a secret sun needs all <laughs> this it needs lots and lots of uh, trim change and all that stuff okay okay so i don't know so who's responsible for deciding who we're going to make you know how we're going to spend the rest of this money and all this stuff <laughs> you are we are yeah i think you know mr gilpin pointed out that what would it cost to make it ADA compliant? <laughs> you can find out. Uh, what are the bids, a rough range of the bids coming in? They are going to be brought in at 11 a.m. on the 25th. That's next Wednesday um, in the executive conference room upstairs. If anybody wants to be there, I'm going to be there. If anybody else wants to be there, let me know. Next Wednesday? Mm hmm The 20... uh, 25th. Sounds close. These are the bids to paint it. Yeah. So who, who published this book? And then you guys got a publisher for your book, or what is this? Like this is in Vermont, Canute. Yeah, right? that's yeah, that's that's the yeah. We're uh, for that one there. Yeah, we're using the we're using the uh, the same one, same one for the. Uh, for the yeah, for that that's the plan. <laughs> we haven't we haven't gotten that far yet. Okay, let's get back to our agenda. Uh, signage for the historic locations in the town, which is. We still don't have the signage up at the Christ Church. Up. <laughs> and I don't know where to go from here to try to get it up. <laughs> it has moved forward. Well, Donnie. Um, location. Yeah. Well, no, no, yeah, we've got, got that. Yeah, that's true. We've they have their location. They know what Donnie, to yeah. Donnie is engineering. Um, oh, yeah, you were there. Yeah. Donnie is engineering a. Uh, uh, a, a frame to put it on and he's uh -huh. uh, trying to decide if he needs to make it tiltable so that they can open that door i thought we decided to put it far enough away from the door so that they could open right. it or lower it yeah. uh -huh. um so he's he's exploring you know how to properly now here it. is tilted and the one at the um, um firehouse museum is tilted and i think that would be nice looking yeah. from the street i think yeah. that would be nice to do it that way. And I haven't, uh, um, <coughs> have not pursued the old jail yet. Mm -hmm. I have agreed on the money for it. Um, Tony brought up an excellent project that I want, I would like to look into in um, uh, Frederick, Maryland. 
where they don't necessarily, they use a, it's about this big, a marker, it's an oval shaped marker, and it would say like Plato Historic Preservation Commission, and the house number would have a number, like number 25 hmm. or number 31, instead of names on it. So the plaque, of course, would always go with the house, and we would have a, a chart of all this. I don't know exactly how it works. I'd love to go up to Frederick at some point and look into it, but there has not been time to just focus on one thing like that. Another thought is to look into having the sign that is over there on Willow Lane that says the tornado would have had it has a start mm -hmm. at 400 feet from this location. Right. <laughs> Why can't we work on trying to have that sign redone and move to the, or leave that one there, but then put one at the proper location yeah. where the tornado actually happened? Yeah, Stuart, I was talking so about these, these Yeah, we we'll talk about it. 26. We were thinking that uh, perhaps the, the actual house, I think it was a Levering house at one point, yes. right, where the screen house was, yeah. that we should mark that as the as historic site, as not so much a structure, but a historic site. Mm -hmm. And I don't know so much about removing the marker that's there, because I think that was all done to be visible from the road, but certainly add yeah, add to that house. Yeah, have something else maybe on uh, Wicomico mm -hmm. uh, indicating it with one school lane or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, mm -hmm. There are a number of things that could be done there. I think is the rectory house, is that on our tentative list of properties to be recognized as an historic structure in the town? Um, on that list that was developed by <laughs> 19, 2000, yeah. Okay. We have a whole list and why we felt they, but it's just never been time to develop it. You know, it all fell apart by 2003 and then we didn't reestablish till what, 2018. So there's never been one committee just to work on these items. So, which brings me to the next item, which is a selection of a new commission chairperson. <laughs> I've been in the position for four years. I've enjoyed doing it only four years in May. As you know, it uh, fell upon me with Art's death. But um, I feel it's time to step back from that position and perhaps to be able to work on this signage, which was, has always been my interest since 2000. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how we go about this. So one amongst us who is willing to uh, young chairman, or do do I step back and not be on the um, commission sure. itself and be a subcommittee like Bob Fern is a subcommittee? Where, when did you turn? May. Okay, so we have a little time because I, you know, it give I'm looking for us to give some thought to. For ourselves if we wanted to but and then maybe at the next meeting be ready to make nominations do we have any terms coming up between this year or uh not this year 2024 some of the terms are up i think i think your two terms are up in 20 let me see it's all scratchy piece of paper but you've got it there yeah i've got to find it i know it's here yeah let's see um actually Stuart. In October of this year, in March and October, but of course you can react. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I've been out. Um, I've been 25. <laughs> yeah. We both had the same door. I've been 25. I'm happy to. I'd be happy to be out. Jane is 24. She has another year. I'm 25. Patty is. No, Patty's 24. Jane's 24. Okay, you two gentlemen are 23 and I'm 25. And we're at maximum capacity now as far as the <laughs> commission goes. I mean, we, we actually cut it down from this point. Mm -hmm. But it's the subcommittees is what I think, you know, we've always talked about having, and yeah. I think it's important. And with the signage, it, that's all I would do would be on that subcommittee and work on signage. Um, just like Bob Curran, I consider him a subcommittee and he works on the train. Um, and I believe that's the route we should go. 
is there, what, what can you give us an input as far as with all the commissions when they change over? How does this work? Well, generally, um, when it comes to the end of uh, your term, um, someone else is nominated or you're renominated. And if you choose not to re, you know, choose not to run again, you can decline the nomination and then um, a vote is taken and that person is installed as the chairperson. Um, and then a vice chairperson is selected after that uh, using the same method. Um, but you started a, a, a plan when you went from seven to five members to allow the membership to dwindle down by attrition. Um, so you have unfortunately one, two, two, three, nope, which is on there twice, two who come off this year. And that would bring you to five, but that also includes Mr. Goldsmith. Um, uh, these are not very intuitive charts. Um, and as you said before, um, you have three that are on until 2025 20, with uh, Ms. Mudd, yourself, and Mr. Goldsmith, and one who comes off in 24, Ms. Hobbs. Mm -hmm. So technically, Mr. Gilpin and Mr. Stewart, or Mr. Bowling are the, the next two peel off, and then you will have your five. They're not peeling anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> she called us a peeling. <laughs> I mean, I, and of course, I'm happy to stay on, but it's not even my term won't even be up. But you mentioned, I mean, about the chairperson. I mean, you can always rotate the chairperson. This is just our appointment to the commission. Exactly. Correct? You can okay. always rotate the chairperson. Sure. Generally, you want to do it annually. And I think it's time to rotate the chairperson. Yeah. You right. mean now rather than May. Are you interested May. at all? Would you be the chair? You're retired now, right? I am. <laughs> so you notice how I coyly said how much time we have. We can think about this, right? Yeah. That, that I was giving myself time to think too. So uh, well, potentially yes, but let me let me Think about it. Right. And I think that's fair given that the commission thought they had until May. So, yeah. Yeah. And they do have to. I mean, no, you're giving us fair warning. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, I mean, a good I idea to do that. Because we, don't, we don't settle these things quickly. Okay. <laughs> My four years will be done in May. We'll meet in May and. Okay. But we can still re. You can still re up, right? To, to serve on the commission, we can, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, is there anything else you wanted to bring up? Right, so is there anything else anybody else wants to bring up? There was something I had discussed. Oh, uh, while we were upstairs, working on going through the we, uh, Tony and I came here earlier than the meeting and we've been upstairs with uh, Craig and uh, Kelly to go through the town history files that they've got the, the vertical files they have up there and just the articles they've saved over the years and we got on the subject of um, digitizing those files um, they have a lot of newspaper clippings a lot of um, just things that have been people have taken the time to get from the local papers and put in the files and organize to some degree. And as Tony and I have discovered as we've been working on the book that one of the problems we've run into trying to get the pictures from the 26 tornado is that all of the newspapers were digitized back when Xeroxing was a thing and they would Xerox the old newspapers, put them in a file somewhere and that's all you can get to anymore. And Xerox copies of photographs are just a disaster. You, you can't much see much of anything on them. And I'm afraid we're heading down that road with what the town has in its vertical files now because their clippings from the 1970s are starting to get faded and yellow. And I think we should look into uh, spearheading an effort to get money or a grant or something 
and personnel to come in and digitize the town's history files, get them accessible to the public, get them organized, put them online. And you know, a lot of it is is repetitive stuff you can find in other places, but it is a pretty interesting collection. They've got some unique stuff here that I think really needs to be preserved. And I think it would be a good cross uh, program for this commission or a project this commission to get rolling. What company comes in and does you hire a company to come in to do something? Yeah, it was suggested that maybe we would hire someone or maybe get people from the college or put out a, a request for people to come in and do it, that we could get a grant to get it done and that it would all be something that we sort of say here do this and then other people come in and get it done it wouldn't be something that we would have to to run you know uh we, we wouldn't have to manage it very closely um, but it would solve a problem for people trying to research uh because you got to come in you gotta you gotta be led upstairs you gotta you tie up the staff a little bit while we're doing it and, it's a really problem for the staff too because yeah. i mean it's just taking up volumes of space yeah and and that plus, I mean, the town minutes, they've got minutes going back to the 1800s, handwritten minutes. Uh, unfortunately, 1926 is missing as <laughs> they skipped 1926 the entire year. Um, but we have a pretty good base of history that I think we, now is the time to preserve it before it becomes too far gone and too out of reach and too late to do it. What's the next step for that? I guess the first step is saying we want to do it. And then I guess the next step is finding grant money and ways to get it done. Who writes the grants here in town? It depends on what it's for. Um, if it's for arts programs, it's dealt with by the arts work group. Um, if it's for, um, I believe uh, Brent would know probably better than anybody else. Um, but it'll probably be somebody in legislative uh, to write the grants, but we have to know where they are and what they are. So it may fall to the commission to find where these opportunities are. It could be with Southern Maryland Heritage. It could be with Charles County. It could be a National Archives thing. I, I'm not sure. I mean, I could talk to Mrs. Um, I can't think of her name right now. Um, <laughs> with the Heritage Commission and see if she can give us some guidance. No, I think it's something we ought to at least look into and make an effort for. Now, another thing, speaking of money, <laughs> um, docents for the upcoming year. Do we want to try to employ somebody to be a docent at the museum? How, if we did, how often would we want the museum open? I mean, right now we're pretty much open one one um, Saturday a month. It's just kind of falling that way with Memorial Day and the Fourth of July. Then we're there in August. Then September falls around Labor Day, so it's kind of falling that way. But do we feel it should be open more frequently? Do we want to have a docent come in that we pay? How do we want to handle it? Or do we want to just continue on the way we are? I'd like to that's the challenge of us to come. I know you to call out for volunteers. I don't know what kind of response you get, but it seems like we're, we managed to cover it. We we have managed to cover it. Mm -hmm. I think a docent would be good if we want to expand the opening hours and, and be more, have a more regular season of openings, you know, uh, we tied almost all of last season to special events. And so we really don't have a clear view of what kind of interest there is outside of a special event anymore. So maybe we need to uh, try a few extra openings this next season just to see if, what the interest level is and see if it's worth pursuing uh, a dose. I know at Christmas time, it seemed like there were a number of people that came and said, well, we come here all the time and it's never open. So yes. there does seem exactly. to be, yeah, there seem to be people who would be coming. Suppose we try to keep it, to open it every Saturday. Could we handle it? Can we get, I mean. 
I think that would be an awful big commitment for four of us people. Yeah, for, for, for us as we are now, but at, at some future point, if we have docents involved, I th I'm thinking well, that maybe I mean, we just try a couple of extra Saturdays. We could get a grant for a dose. We could. Um, the question is, do we want to go that way? And how do you go about advertising for a dose? Or just keep going the way we are right now? Yeah. We'll table it for another time. Oh, we got it. Is, is the is the caboose going to be ready like for April? I mean, what's well, it's as ready as it's going to be. I mean, we keep adding, and we've got the mannequin. We have this going. We get that ladder. That's done. As far as what's going on with Shannon, I haven't gotten, you know, we agreed to the money, but it just hasn't taken place yet to get these items done. Does she has any? But you haven't talked to Shannon? I talked to Shannon yesterday, and she went back to the um, <clears throat> the artwork on the building. In the interior, you know, where they had the pinup girls. And <laughs> I went to her, I said, you know, that's not going to work. I said, we can go with. I said, well, I thought. Let's not be hasty. That you know. And I said, we are trying to stick with that era. However, I just can't see that. I, I can't see parents having to explain to their children right. what that is. You, uh, how do y'all feel about it? Well, I remember it as a child, and it was never explained to me. <laughs> <laughs> I you figured it out. <laughs> Am I on the wrong track? No, I no. Well, I think so I mean, I'm thinking because I told Chen, I said maybe we could do something with um, uh, the little train that could. Remember that? Uh -huh. and, oh yeah. And it's that train just trying to chug its way up that right. hill. Could be one of them, and another yeah. could be um, oh, what's it? Uh, Thomas the train. Thomas, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think, you know, I on the outside of the caboose or inside? No, this, the... is, this is inside. As you're, when you walk in, remember the picture from 19... Yeah, the pinup girls here. 43. 43. We had the pinup girls here. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a thought. Something should be up there, but I just don't think it should be. Well, well, well you, could, you could do that if you well, did well, it the other, very tastefully. Pictures beside pinup girls that we could put up. Uh, and it, it's so not a my business. To the yes, business. When I think of 1940, I don't think of Thomas the train agent. That's just yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I, agree. I agree. And I think it it's what gives the wrong know? message to what we're doing with the caboose. Yeah, it sounds it, more like it's I, a, yeah. It's it just this I don't think. Think. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, remember that. That's right. We could remember the 40s, which is wartime. Right. I think we could probably come up with some wartime memorabilia that would be appropriate. You know, some Uncle, yeah. and Uncle Sam poster, mm -hmm. we want you, you know, yeah. 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 something like that, and then and go that way, and then we won't uh, you know, run into a. Oh, remember that when I we can hide the pinup girls behind the Uncle Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the Riveter, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's the two we need. Uncle Sam wants you and Rosie the River. Rosie the yeah. River. Yeah. yeah. But, but um, she she brought up that, but is she, you know, has she? No, see, I think what she's what? looking at is for like some kind of decal thing where she can go back and um, embellish it some. But what I was thinking was somebody that was an artist, you went in and you did this. What? I mean, I can see the Uncle Sam poster on Main Street, in what's now the Stephens building on the outside of that building as a kid. And his finger was sticking up in the air and he wanted you. Right. <laughs> Now, surely those yeah. cows have got to be out there somewhere. Oh, yeah. Here's my uh -huh. thing. Rosie oh, the River. Oh, we gotta, yeah. Gotta right. have this, oh, we got to have this together so that when we open up in April, that we can, you know, that it's. I don't know. I mean, I, that's I a fabulous. But I can and, only push Patty but so far. I'm you know. hungry. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know what to do. do. Do we go to somebody else to get the more artwork? No, no, no. Do we go I to mean, somebody else and if, you know. I thought that she was going to be. And are we like, I mean. But she's talking about actually painting this. I was thinking when you talked about the pinups, it was just we were going to get period get arts and, and, you know, I mean, you know, Betty Grable, that kind of thing and stick it up on the wall. And yeah, I don't know that that's really <laughs> too far out of the. But, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> but 
more than just that. I mean, I, we were talking blankets and fixing up the refrigerator and all of that. There is an entire list that she that. has. She sent that list to, to, to Chris Wagner, and it's never gone any further than that. Okay. And she was the one that we discussed getting the material. So to me, she should be gathering these materials. Are we so doing any kind of a contract with her? I mean, does she... No. Does she charge for these things? I mean, this is well. When she got them, them, yes, we were going to pay pay for them, and you know, pay, pay for those. Kelly but, and, but, um, you know, she she was going to be paid to make this happen. But it there's that happened. Well, then what we ought to do is put the date in front of her and say, look, we need to have this done by April first or March twenty one or something like that, and say, can you do it? And if the answer is no, let me get someone else. We got a list, we got the stuff, we can go do it. Yeah. Is she trying to think the date is a forcing function? Without date, I'll get it, I'll get to everything eventually. Right. Look how long it took me to get this post. There's no <laughs> excuse for that. Yeah. If she's trying to find period pieces and she's trying to find you know specific date range, that could be the reason why there's a delay because they're just not up on the market. Or she's busy, which yeah. is probably more realistic. Maybe fair. Shannon's running two businesses. And um, also chairing the arts work group. Um, but I think, uh, along with what Mr. Gilpin has suggested, um, some sort of proposal to you, um, you yeah. know, so that you have an idea of time, yeah. time and money. I don't yeah. think that's unreasonable. Yeah, she sent me the list of all the items that you know they were going to pursue the finding, but. That might be a way of getting that communications display I want done finished as well, because I've always yeah. felt stymied by not being able to go and spend money when I see something online to have somebody else do it, and then we reimburse them when we, when the display is up and working. I mean, we got the museum part set up pretty quick. Stuart did great. Yeah. Getting that, getting all that poster, poster yeah. stuff done. We could do it. I think it's folks. I, like the kids for I think we can make April happen. Well, well, young kids it. were so focused with the um, typewriter, and they kept pushing those buttons. Yeah. And I said, well, I took that again. home and cleaned it up and fixed it, and it broke again. It broke again. I can still fix what's broken. So I maybe we just do. need to get another typewriter. Oh, oh they enjoy the phone, they enjoy the hands. I would love to get that phone thing. Going. Yeah, I think that they enjoy that too when they get a chance to actually touch something. Mm -hmm. uh, every time a kid goes in a museum, it's don't touch that, stay off that, no, no, no. Right. And we've got places where, yeah, go ahead and touch that. And they love that. That's why they love that Harry Potter train, because they could touch it. Yeah. But for next Christmas, we've got it. Well, that high quality display that I put together for it. <laughs> they loved it. <laughs> they loved it. a work piece of, of <laughs> well, you know, I mean, we can always take out <laughs> luggage and everything, if that would be an area where you wanted to do the telephone thing. Um, but the, yeah. I don't know. You think an adult? I don't know. I thought that. I mean, I to me, that, anything that's interactive is great. Well, yeah, but the the luggage was part of, and the and the bench were, you know, they where they understood that that was the original station. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and that luggage idea, I got that from when I went to Ellis Island a thousand years ago, and you walked in the front door, and here was right. the luggage piled to the ceiling. Right. And you know, well, I had so much yeah. fun with Rich going through the, going through the players, over the, you know, there are the props, props back there. there. The prop. Well, that's it. And our space is very small. You know, we have a well, very small but, area. I don't know. I, I just if we ever got that in the house, we could have the telephone system over there. Well, we can have the telephone system can be very stupid. The woods that we don't make. I mean, I'm going to die before some of the stuff gets. Let's let's get it done. Let's get that. I mean, I, I was I was hoping that the, that's where my that's hand, for I, for I, April or an April opening that that caboose would be ready and you would walk in there and there would be old coats and hats hanging up and blankets on. Well, I'll. Give her a date. Anyway. I'll give her a date. That's the best I can do. Unless there's somebody else we should turn to. No, I, I think she. Know. I think she could do it. Don't you, Craig? I mean, I think she could do it. But I mean, she's a capable person. But I mean, you yeah. know, I don't know how. I haven't been party to that communication, so I don't know um, if she's been given a date. Yeah, well, I can. Yeah, 
I will get back in touch with her and tell her that our thoughts went to another in another direction to Rose and Riveter and Uncle Sam wants you. And these are the dates that we'll be opening. We'll be opening, I guess, April 24th. Can we add something from the Navy? A Navy thing. I don't know what it would be, but yeah. I think a Navy thing would be important. Since it's the Navy. Yeah. Right? Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it could be Pearl Harbor, but something. Time here, a Navy. Victory at sea. How about that um, thing about whispering or something? Oh, loose lips. Loose lips. Loose lips. Loose lips. Yes. That, 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 that's, that's a good one. Well, no, wait a minute. But she did have that <laughs> one. Oh, did she? Yes. I wish I'd had it in front of me, but she. Okay. No, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean I that and and all of the, I don't know, what were we going to do? Like a coal bucket and a lunchbox and all that kind of stuff we talked about. Yeah. And Chris Wagner was going to, he know said that he could get, get all of that right. stuff. Uh -huh. you, should have that. you should have bought that. Ask for what they have and just get it. Just get what they have now and get that part of it up there. And it could just be ongoing. We add it as we get it. There's there are actually some photos also of people lining up to volunteer uh, outside the courthouse during World War Two that maybe we could get mm -hmm. one of those framed and put up in there if we're going to do a little mini World War Two. Well, just matches the thing. Government, so yeah, but it doesn't. I mean, I don't know whether we were doing like a, a display of World War Two or just matching the caboose to the era. It was, it was more to match the caboose to the era rather Perfect. than focus on World War Two per se. But there's a lot of stuff out there we could. Instead of pinup girls, which were World War II also. <laughs> which guys thought I know, but. <laughs> I tried, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there anything else anybody would like to bring up and discuss? Yeah. The opening, I, I want to put something in. We're not going to have another quarterly meeting until April. Until May. It's April, May. May. So April, we're going to be April, open April, and going. It's April. April. But still. So it, and by then, the new chairman should take well, it. Well, the farmer's April. market is starting, starts the first Saturday in April, right? Yes, April 1st. And we're talking about the 29th? No, I think it's the 24th or the 25th. It's with the plate. We, we opened before. Oh, was it high to me? Uh, La Plata Spring Festival. And I'm not sure the date of the La Plata Spring Festival. No, La Plata Celebration. Thing. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was 29th. What's the date of the home? Same thing. 29th, I'm pretty okay. sure. And it's yeah. the same day. Yeah, so, okay. So you're suggesting we need to meet again maybe Before that. early March to make sure yeah. everything's moving along. To see if. I'm thinking. Maybe we could okay. give her a deadline for letting us know what she can do prior to that meeting because we're going to have to scurry if we're going to get somebody else yeah she may just may not know that she, we need it this fast okay. and just all right give I'll a little push gonna, i'll get back sure. to her and tell her you know we gotta i mean give her a march to gotta get if we gotta spark those square one again yeah right somebody. yes she basically knows something i mean uh it's well, easy enough to me to go into an antique store. You have the list of what you need. The only thing I don't know how to get is the stove pipe to the, you know, we wanted to. Well, the, that would be, I mean, Chris Wagner could somebody could build that. that. I, I really think maybe we buy a stove pipe and we'll paint it black. Yeah. Maybe we could bring Chris Wagner back as a subcommittee too. Also, not just for this, but for other things too. Because he he can put his hands on stuff like that. Um, anyway, but th let's let's see what we can do and see if see if we can. Do we know anybody? I mean, I'm sure there's some kind of a uh, historical thing over there in Indian Head on the base. Talk about the base. It, how would we connect to that? So maybe they have maybe they have old blankets and stuff stored there. Uh, it's funny. I know that uh, I was up at the Naval Base up at Lakehurst, and they have a little museum for the Hindenburg and all the blimps that you supply. <laughs> it's really cool, by the way. But that's where we're at. Sorry. Yeah, but maybe they did have something like that. If they have any uh, logos or um, insignia that they used in 
1940s. That would be something we could put on the caboose as well. That were specific to what they were doing at Indian Head. So, OK, so. I don't know. OK, well, I'll get back in touch with Shannon and tell her these things that we have everything from loose lips to Navy victory at sea to Uncle Sam to Rosie. And why can't we get these other items and we've got to have them by? The installation is not the I mean, if you hang pictures and mm -hmm. place things, maybe glue them down or something, sit and walk. But and I give her a date of April 1st. That's what it needs to be complete. Well, yeah. And when do you all want to meet again? I think at least in March. Yeah, I think March. Too. In March 30th. March 30th. Is that a Friday afternoon, one o'clock? This is this seems no, Friday. that's not a Friday. Like, that's a Thursday. 31st yeah. would be 31st. Friday. March 31st. It's so Friday, one more. Yeah. No, you want Thursday? What day? The farmer's market opens on April 1st. Mm -hmm. And then it's, I mean, we can. <laughs> what's what's the, the sign at the farmer's market brings people down there? Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, but there's people in town. And I just think, unless it, you know, for a special thing like Veterans Day Parade or whatever else is on a Sunday, old time holiday gathering, you know, stuff like that. And that the old time holiday gathering, there was a, you know, the players have a, the players always have a, uh, so there are two major show, things. A three o'clock show on that day. There's two major things that we need to cover for this meeting in March. One is what's our schedule? Yeah. Right for the season. Right. And the second one would be the work, the work that we've been talking about. Right. Those we should have us. Items. And it would seem to me that I don't know when we're looking at opening in April. If it's early April or late April. But if it's early April, then we probably need to meet, meet closer to the middle of March. Yeah, we don't have any reaction time. So we have time to do stuff. All right. Yeah. What is a Friday in March? About the 10th. Sounds okay to me. Okay with everybody else. I can it's just about six weeks from now. And see if I would have to leave early yes. at to pick up my kid from school on a other than that though, it's no problem. If we be what time do we leave? Probably two. I gotta get there by fifteen. Like, well, okay. And if he's doing after school, correct. Then I won't have to worry about it. If you, I, I, I avoided that because I got to take my wife to a doctor. Okay, the tenth, <laughs> March tenth is fine. March tenth is fine, and hopefully we will make. Or we could do it on, on a different day. It's not Friday. Yeah, yeah well, we're we're kind of used to Fridays at one o'clock. Okay. Everybody's content with that. <clears throat> yeah. Um. <clears throat> And I guess the bottom line is, do we want to be open and connected with the holidays as we've been in the past, or do we want to try to uh, increase? Well, we always get a good, we seem to get a good turnout when it's tied to other events. Right? Yeah. That, that yeah. Yeah. We, just, we just have to explore if the turnout has life on its own or whether it's only tied to those events, yeah. just to get us an idea whether that ties into the docents or not. I think we should also post our season out on the sign by the museum so that when people do bounce off the doors, they at least have some way of finding out right. yeah. why we weren't open yes. so right. they could right. come back. So we need to. And we did put it in the town notes last year. So each yeah. season I list when we're open. <clears throat> I'm, I'm thinking of the people that spur of the moment. Oh, let me see if it's open. Mm -hmm. And they just bounce off of it. Yeah, so. you mm -hmm. can't just say the first set. We're open the first Saturday from da 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 da. da. You need to put the dates on it. Yeah. On the side. We're open all lines. And who makes the signage? Or how does this happen? I maybe maybe Susan. <laughs> you know, um, I don't know. But we would just have to. All we'd have to do is just get a placard of some kind that we put up. That's right out there with the. Oh, you're saying something permanent that says we're open the. Just for the season. For I mean, it would just be a a placard that we just stick up there and say, okay, this is the 2020 
three yeah. schedule of openings for the yeah. train station museum. And then yeah, we'll just go through. Yeah. And we can also put that in nice on the yeah. Yeah. And we're going to March, April, May, June. Yeah. So. Well, I think we should all look at what what commitment you're willing to make to have it open for these additional dates. Mm -hmm. well, what yeah, but what happened is when you gave her the, the date, I mean they just put them on the calendar, which people Actually, the calendar was my idea many, many, many years ago to have that calendar, but a little, a little blurb in the in the town notes. So, to everybody March. So, when it, when it, when it, April, May, June is going to be the next next one, next yeah. town notes. I believe so. Put a little blurb, and you know, we we've been having a page with something historical on it, but maybe we can make you know. Have that say the caboose is open, you know, the caboose is open or something like that. And these are the dates will be open for those three months. Yep. We okay. establish what those yeah. are. Michelle will put that. That has to be to oh, uh, Michelle, my gosh, by March 1st. So between now and then, you're going to have to come up with what dates you want to be open then. Oh, so if we have that <laughs> answer <laughs> that. Late to get it in the um so for April. For April. Well, do you want to just do the normal special events and pick like two additional openings just to test that out, or we we just go with what we got and see if we just do a docent for what we have? But I'm willing to, you know, step in and and cover at least one of them. If we do pick to have two, so me too. So, but the way wanna, things go, we do want to do what we did last year at the, the first wedding. I don't think there's any point us opening before the April 29th or whatever that date is. I, mm -hmm. I, I Probably right. I really don't. And then if you give me the dates, I'll, I'll go to Marty's. <clears throat> He's got the marquee out in this. Uh, Oh, yeah. So, yeah. If you give me the dates, I'll give, give them to Marty so you can put it up. Yeah. So, you can. so if we want to yeah. pick something in between there. Memorial Day. Yeah. Memorial Day is the 29th of May. Okay. <laughs> so you've got April 29th. You've got May 29th. Yeah, the Saturday would be the 29th. Yeah. And then June. The last Saturday in June would just be one week before 4th of July. So that'll spell out that year. You got it. So June is our our oh, dead zone minute. right now. <laughs> so we pick a pick a weekend in June, 29th of June. When's that? Wait a minute. May you're talking about being open on Memorial Day? Yeah. That's Saturday. The Saturday? Saturday of Memorial Weekend. Are there other town events that day? No. Oh. Is, no. Oh, okay. Well, well that would be well, well that could be a good experiment. Yeah, that would be it, one of our experiment dates then. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Memorial Day weekend is is May twenty seventh. Would be right. that Saturday. Saturday May twenty seventh. Yeah. Okay. May twenty seventh. Okay. Yeah, that's what that's what I was looking at. So that's one. So you're going to be open May sixth. So you're going to be open May sixth and twenty seventh. Who said anything that May? 26th? Oh, you were just open on you were just open on April twenty ninth. Right. 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 Going to be open on April twenty ninth and May twenty seventh. Yes. And then you're not going to do that, the June. 3rd of June, or you are? That's the June 3rd. That's pretty close. Sir. That's close. That's close. Saturday. Saturday. Oh, no, just a Saturday. Oh, OK. I, so. so we could actually take any first. any day in June just to cover June. Is that what we're saying? Well, I, I certainly wouldn't do May 27th and turn around and do the next Saturday. Oh, I, I agree. Let it out for, what, what's the Saturday in the middle of June? 17th to the 24th. What? And you could do July 17th, 1st. And then you can do July 1st. No, I think you should. Oh. I mean, people are going to get mixed up. Well, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. it, it's just so easy if we do it in relationship to the holiday weekends, is what 
what I found when I was in charge, but I won't be in charge by then. So, but you still are. I, <laughs> well, I don't want it to be a a burden to come up with a schedule. I mean, a suggestion to do this extra couple of weekends was just to test out what it would do if we yeah. decoupled it from the special events. But anyway, if, okay. if it's a burden, we just stick with the special events and just keep it keep it that way. Because the next one. Uh, in the town notes, it would be, um, I don't know, what's the 4th of July weekend? Is that, uh, it's the 1st, because uh, that would be July 1st or the Saturday. The 4th so. is on a Tuesday, so. 4th is on a Tuesday, so you're both talking about, I mean, the first Monday, the, the first Saturday is the 1st of July. Okay. Um, I don't know. Guys. Well, that would be in place of doing something at the end of June. Well, at the end of June, that's all. So July 1st, if we do one on April 29, <laughs> we do one on May 27, right. and then we do one on July 1st, okay. it's essentially one a month. Yeah. Right. That's what we did there. That's yeah. Right. And, and That's then, good. and I, you know, I think the 27th would be a good, the, uh, the yeah. day one would be a good experiment day for if it'll just draw on its own. Yeah. Well, the 5th of August is the first Saturday. And, you know, August we can, we can Near the end of August, or okay. and then the first uh, Saturday in September is Labor Day weekend. Oh, well then I have to go to that. I don't know. I but if if we're just worried about between now and three you know, months, no, no, yeah. why don't we just put those first three dates and then we can always update for the next? Yeah, month. that's a good idea. 29th, May 27th, July 1st, July 1st, and then July 1st, there's not right. going to be any June 17th, right? Right, okay. All right. Okay. Since July 1st, not to muddy the waters, but just to give you a heads up, since July 1st is the first Saturday, you have five Saturdays in July. Okay. So if you wanted to go back to the end of the month. Oh, yeah. Well, there's the first. We're essentially putting it on the border of the, each month. Mm -hmm. month. Yeah, we can see okay. where Memorial Day falls and look at other things by then. But this will be good for the new Yeah, this will get us past the immediate issue. <laughs> getting into the notes. Okay. So we're going to have the actual dates on the board that we, sure. the poster that right. we pass put up too. And well, we can the, figure out the next meeting, let's determine the rest of the schedule season that we set at a large death meeting. Line at the door. So that we can have signage on the right. the real We can have a little so laminated so sign on, yeah, on the door. Oh, yeah. Right. And so then, we'll but, but have that saying. Rather than the deck. And we need to, right. um, I'm sure Craig or Kelly could put together a. We, we, we need to do you know. the sandwich boards, too, to just say museum open 10 to 2, not putting up. What, what did we have on a people patty? <laughs> Museum open today. Maybe museum open today. Okay. Yeah. Ten to two. Yeah. So. Or just yeah. museum open today. Ten to two. Yeah, but well, yeah. We need to get Kelly to redo those. Kelly can do these other things that we're talking about too. Just a little, just a blurb with those dates on it. No, sure. But we've got to get all and the dates. Put it in there. We'll establish the rest of the dates on March tenth. Okay. Or train museum open today. If we say museum, is that going to be confusing to anybody? Yeah, because we have, well, the boards already have. Oh, okay. The train museum with the train. Gotcha. Museum. Okay. What we do was move the time. I think that's what we determined to remove the time off of it. Well, yeah, and it's in, and and the same thing with like Martin's, which is yeah. we just have been putting it up. Putting it up on Martin's on the day of. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. You know, like he's closed on yeah. Saturday, so we want to yeah. do it way in advance. That's right. Yeah. What's the address of the train museum? Is there an address? Yes, it's Ken Avenue, but I'm. Ken Avenue. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably close enough. <laughs> Ken Avenue. We don't, get, we don't get mail there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So we're, so we're going to meet on when? What are we? March 10th. March, March 10th, right. Wanna, okay. Can I borrow okay. your pen? Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, thanks. I'll forget. And, um, sure. Yeah. Because three and the 
in the town notes, but also in the get to Kelly as well as Michelle so that we get. I don't know. The article for the spring thing is going to be the, the homeschool children with the picture. I sent it all to y'all picture in the little blurb. That's going to be in there. Okay. When did you send us this? Yesterday evening. Oh, okay. Because okay. I didn't well, see I it either. So yeah. That's going to be okay. in the town notes Neat. for the spring edition coming out. Okay. And then we will have the dates that are going to be open. Yeah, and, and but maybe she can do a little, I don't know, like a poster with on the on our page with like these are the dates we'll be open. Okay, like there's that. so much in that town notes, I can't even read them anymore because the print is so tiny, it is difficult. Does anybody else complain about that? Not to me, I but uh, I mean, I, I know they can't add okay, we'll it to it. My goodness, I know I have. Oh, oh, I have okay. I have. All right. Okay. May I? Someone motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. So. Uh -huh. All right. Amen. Yes, sir. Ouch. If I reach out to the electrician, if I'm ready to do it. If, if he says, oh, I need to get paid for that, there's, I assume there's a way to deal with that. Yeah, there's a way to deal with it because he just needs to give us a bill and we bring the bill here. And um, yeah, we'll have the problem <laughs> is it takes <laughs> <What's that>? uh, <laughs> <laughs> not even paid close to a month. Yeah, right. four weeks. So, yeah. um, not to me, but I <laughs> didn't complain about it before. I never met the electrician. I don't know. Um, then the other question, yeah, is just if, is there money if, if I have receipts? Is this, stuff? Is this the electrician yes, that you have? No, no. If you have the receipts, you have everything. Electrician that, um, that uh, Dottie? What? Because that guy's yeah. name is Jerry Rice, but he is no, Donnie and me. Donnie and I are the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Christian that Donnie gets. Yeah, they got him before. Yeah. Jerry and Rice. Yeah. Jeremy. Jeremy, something? No, never mind. So you got it. You got it. Okay. Yeah, the guy's name is Jeremy. I think. And okay, that's nothing. That's nothing. But, but he's, he's somebody that Donnie said. Well, yeah, they, yeah, they got I, I don't know. Donnie had. I had a electrician at the Jeremy Donahue. Just get him to do yeah. What they did is they took a the air conditioning out of house. Yeah, I know. Out of Jerry parents' house and put it in the caboose. Oh, it worked great. It worked great. <laughs> but Donnie and this this Jerry Rice guy who was you know, really really old. <laughs> he, uh, I mean, they seem to be able to get things done. But I mean, seriously, well, Donnie well, is eighty-one. Oh wow! <laughs> oh, no, this guy's walking. Yeah, so this is yeah. Everyone's gonna say. Yeah, I kind of hate the bottom. He's running around quite a bit, but uh, if you leave him to do now, he will eventually. <laughs> I'll call them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.